You'd never be the same again. You just no, no, you wouldn't. You never laugh again. <laughs> you never laugh. You'd probably again. have like a five o'clock shadow. <laughs> Welcome back to Cam Korea. The Korean and American experience in Seoul. I'm Pill. I'm Suzy. And, <laughs> and we have the lovely Belle. Belle, how are you today? I'm doing very well, thank you. I'm kind of a movie geek, I guess, a little bit. Yeah, really? you're a geek. <laughs> <laughs> Do you watch any Korean movies? I've watched a few. I've watched like action movies, mm -hmm. like obviously Old Boy is a classic. Oh, oh man, Old oh, Boy is so awesome. Oh, Love, oh boy. It's, it's very adult themed, though. Mm -hmm. How, when did you see that? When it came out? I actually saw it in high school. Oh. So probably about like 2012. When you were in the U.S.? Yeah, when I was in the U.S. Wow. Before I even learned Korean or even thought about So Korea. why did you watch that movie? Um, I am actually into movies as well. So I was, I've heard a lot of good reviews about it, especially uh -huh. on like Reddit and uh -huh. the internet. So I ended up watching it with my high school boyfriend at the time. <laughs> and um, I was just captivated by it immediately because there was so much theme in it. It mm -hmm. was amazing. Yeah, definitely someone was thinking outside of the box when they made that movie. Right. Yeah. It's not a normal type of movie. No, every, everything is like down to it to the detail like mm. it has a meaning mm -hmm. right and the theme and the plot and the twist oh my god the twist i i didn't watch tv for the week after i watched that movie because that twist just messed with my head so much right i mean did you see old boy i watched it this year oh my <laughs> goodness what <laughs> What did you think of it? Um, yeah, it was it was really fun. Like, yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> it wasn't censored, the one you watched, right? No, no. no. Mine was censored. Oh, my goodness. Is On that... TV? No, 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 no. Like, how did you watch it that it was censored? <laughs> Secret. Right? So, um, <laughs> it, was, it was a crazy movie. And that twist where uh, the, the love scene... With the was very. I mean, oh my goodness. I mean, the way they shot it, they they made it like super passionate and mm -hmm. like you could. It's very feel, raw. Yeah, they built up that relationship, I know. so that you could like really follow their their love building, and then it kind of climaxes to that to that bedroom scene. It was it was definitely a, a, a really crazy twist. Right. I didn't want to say anything because I didn't know if it would be a spoiler. Or considered yeah. a spoiler at this oh. point. But when was that movie made, though? It was when I was in elementary school. I think so. Like, so I wasn't able to uh, see that movie. Yeah, two thousand three. Two thousand three. It wow. was when I was in third, uh, fourth grade. Oh wow! Yeah, that, that would not be a proper movie. Imagine to see. watching that in elementary school. But I guess I saw Old Boy. It sounds like a cool movie. <laughs> You'd never be the same again. You just no, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> you'd never laugh again. <laughs> <laughs> you never laugh. Probably again. have like a five o'clock shadow. <laughs> you'd be like, oh, yeah. man, <laughs> smoking. Who a are these people? <laughs> <laughs> I'm carrying a hammer. <laughs> like, yeah. You don't even start drinking coffee. You just go straight to scotch. You know? You're so yeah. troubled. Oh man, it was, it was definitely one of those movies where I, you have to watch more than once. Mm -hmm. Right. You'd notice so much more the second time. And the first time, you're just so confused by the end. You're like, what just happened? Like, mm. did, I, did I really just see that? Have you been to any of the clubs in the area, Yonse? Or anywhere else? I've been to a club in Hongdae once. Mm. And it was so crowded, I could not move. Mm. So I just kind of stood there, smelling everyone's sweat. <laughs> <laughs> He's like... Yeah, half of it was just standing like between two people, and then the other half was just waiting in line for the girls' mm -hmm. bathroom, which took half an hour. Mostly Koreans, all Koreans, some foreigners. What was the mix? People. Uh, Hongdae had a lot of foreigners, but then a lot of Koreans. They were all so young. I went when I was when I was twenty three, so mm -hmm. I was just in a crowd with a bunch of like nervous nineteen year olds. Mm -hmm. mm. So if you compare a club. California, USA, 
the club, Seoul, Korea, what's the difference? Um, I feel like in Korea, people aren't very like, uh, like I want to, I want to dance a lot and be very like outgoing. Um, They're more just kind of like, I don't know. It feels almost like a social yeah, yeah, setting. Yeah. Like they're trying to, they're like, everyone's eyeing each other mm-hmm. and like gauging each other. So it's yeah. almost like competitive feeling. Yeah, they're trying mm-hmm. to get the numbers of the girls. Yeah. yeah, the, the girl yeah. Like the it's like a mission, mission phone number, like yeah. the scoping out the area. Yeah. It's just like guys constantly like asking for your phone number yeah. and not like a lot of fun like i prefer bars in korea <laughs> to clubs yeah. so you're dancing on the dance floor and some guy just like makes his way over just to ask you for the phone number or is he like hitting on you trying to like bump and grind a little bit or get a little friendly um What's you the- get you get a little bit of both i had one guy try to hug me Ew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> We're normally in America. You'd say like, "Oh, he's he's on some drugs right uh, now," but that's not really a thing in Korea. So, because he hugged you, yeah. Well, it was just like a random guy, just mm-hmm. like asking for a hug. Oh, it kind of creeped me out. Well, did you hit the club scene a lot in in America? I did not actually, uh, well, so I can't say a lot on it. Yeah. Well, I'm not a big club goer, but I did see some crazy stuff at clubs right in clubs p- random people are just making out in the middle of the club Ew. like doing stuff yeah it's like a dirty place it is in but I've seen, no in america i've seen like if two people like each other and it's really crowded they'll just start kissing right then and there oh <laughs> right yeah yeah that's why it's so dark because you turn on the lights and they never clean it because it's just constantly like that kind of stuff like people like Hooking up in random places. Hooking up. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they're hooking up on the dance floor. That would be yeah, a little maybe difficult. not on the dance floor, <laughs> but um, yeah. other places. Yeah, I mean that, that's where bathrooms are made for yeah. in, in America. I don't think they would do that in Korea. No, no. It's just like I said. It's just like them standing there trying yeah. to get your number. Right. Like so awkwardly moving their shoulders. I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different, like sexual inhibition. In America versus Korea, mm-hmm. it's definitely a little different. The mm-hmm. feeling, the vibe, right? Um, like I don't know really anyone in Korea who's down for like public displays of affection, like the more open. Yeah, displays. it's very taboo. And I've also heard that I don't know if this is true, so I wanted to ask you guys that Koreans see like American women as very sexually liberated. So that's why. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> totally perfect. Yeah. Uh, like that's totally correct. So that's why it's almost like taboo to date an American girl, or mm-hmm. it's kind of seen as a because they're so liberated. Yeah, or it's seen as like a not like serious thing, just like a fun kind of thing. Mm-hmm. When you're young. Oh, sexually liberated. Um, uh, obviously, like, Susie's, not, like, Susie's not. I'm not really Susie's sure not about that, but then, like, when I when I see a foreign girl, I feel like oh, like she 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 might be like really cool with sex. Yeah, cool about sex. <laughs> Easy going, relaxed. Yeah, yeah. But, because like Korean girls, like especially me, I'm kind of like closed. Yeah, so it depends on the person personality. Mm-hmm. You know, rules over all cultures but culture definitely has uh, a lot to do with it right Mm -hmm. so do you when you look at yourself and you explain or talk about yourself do you feel that you are pretty sexually liberated um oops i don't feel very sexually liberated (laughs) but when i'm in like a crowd of koreans like i've had to change my style a lot because Korean girls don't really wear low cut tops. Yeah. Right, yeah. I mean, look what we got here. We got like button up to the very top. Or not. <laughs> yeah, it's very common. So that's why it's hard to shop in Korea because it looks really good on Korean mm-hmm. girls. Like they look, they look great in mm-hmm. Korean clothing. But mm-hmm. if a white girl tries to wear Korean clothing, I just look like I got off the Mayflower <laughs> and I'm ready to start like colonizing. <laughs> okay, but but my buddy Cooter did talk about with me the the lower half korean girls are always wearing super super uh high shorts Mm -hmm. yeah that is very true like their skirts are very short right super short (laughs) like even girls who go to work like Uh or attending like company Mm -hmm. was very surprised even students opposite yeah like the pockets are showing like the actual pockets are showing it's so short and well i mean at least a few years ago in the u.s that was 
much more taboo than showing cleavage. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, cleavage is, it's like pretty out there in America because you got, you know, especially in California, you got bathing oh, yeah. suits, bikinis. Just walk around in bikinis. Mm -hmm. You right? see it all the time. You have topless beaches in America, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, it's a little different, like the mentality mm -hmm. as far as how to dress and sexual experiences, right? So, I was, I was raised in America and I came to Korea. So, I had that um, preconceived mindset also of mm -hmm. like how Korean girls are, mm -hmm. right? Like, not as sexually liberated as Americans or, or whatnot, but that's not always the case, right? But I will say, uh, American girls, right, or white girls <laughs> in general, they're a little more um, confident and aggressive, right? Not everyone, but some girls will say, Hey, what are you doing later in tough sex? And the guys be like, oh, okay, it's cool. But they yeah. don't do that in in Korea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Korea, it's it's very. I heard it's like a really big chase for the guy. Right, it's like yeah. guys. Um, the roles are guy has to um, win over the girl, and the girl's job is to protect, and yeah. <laughs> defend the chastity. Yeah, I always actually am surprised. Like when I watch a Korean movie or drama that has mm -hmm. romance in it, I feel like I'm always watching. Like the girl hates the guy, and right. it just it just seems like such like a like horrible relationship. I'm like these two people could like never love each other, and then yeah. all of a sudden they're making out, and I'm so confused because I'm like, wait, they just hated each other. Yeah. Like I don't get it. Well, have you ever had that kind of relationship where in the beginning it's like I don't really don't like this guy, or like he's so annoying, or I don't like, like I don't like his style, and then boom, somehow the script flips. Actually, yeah, my high school boyfriend, he, he chased me for like a year. <laughs> and I was like, no way, I'm not getting with this guy. But he kept pestering me. <laughs> sometimes you can, sometimes it works. Sometimes it works. Yeah, it does work. It does work. Right. Nobody chases for me. <laughs> no. No. Well, you're taken anyway. You have a boyfriend. So, um, <laughs> I mean, it depends on how you turn him down, too. Right? That's very true. I've been uh, turned down, but in a way where like, um, there's a chance there. I still got to work on it. And then you can still keep going. But like in Korea, they just block you. <laughs> like right. once you break up, that's actually another point too, is like how people break up mm. in Korea versus America. How do they break up in Korea? Mm, good question, Susie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, my breakup wasn't really nice. <laughs> It was really bad. <laughs> I was a psycho, but I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> okay, so like um, you totally stopped communication? Yeah, with, with of him? course, because yeah, he cheated on me. Oh no, that's horrible. <laughs> oh, that is so sad. Yes, that, that happens sometimes. But for you, um, when it comes to breakups, are you cool with them after? Or like, uh, you're nothing to me. You're dead to me. I try to be cool with them after. Mm -hmm. I don't like to have enemies, but I feel like there's the stereotypes, right? Like there's like your first love and how they'll always be in love with you. So I feel like every time I try to like be friends with an ex, um, they always end up like expressing emotion towards me. Oh, uh, so they always still kind of love you or, uh, or like want you. They're just waiting. Yeah, so I, I kind of have to cut them off after a certain right. point. Mm, yeah, I know what that means. But like normally... Koreans don't keep in contact. Yeah, don't. They don't. With the exes. Wow. They and block them. So, so they, do they block them right away? How, what's like the method of breaking up? Do they call them, text mm. them, cacao message? Yeah. <laughs> cacao message. Tani, <laughs> are you sleeping? Oh, no. The cacao message is, yeah. are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Point, uh, dot, 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 question mark. Oh, gosh. Okay. I, I bet there's like some cacao stickers for that specifically. <laughs> Well, can, that was yeah. Can you imagine that, like breakup <laughs> cacao stickers. Make I feel it. like this exists. Huh? Let's make it. That's hilarious. It's like <laughs> probably make a lot of money. Yeah, it's like what? What are some good messages that we can make on cacao to tell the the lover that it's all done? Um, Let's make one each. One each. Okay, you guys go first while I think about it. Okay, I'll make it simple. It just ain't working anymore. Dot dot dot. <laughs> Mine would probably be a cute animal 
waving goodbye, but with like a suitcase. <laughs> so that way they kind of get the message, but it's not too hard on them. Mine seems so wordy now. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't working, girl. And then yours is like suitcase. Dot, dot, dot. Okay. Yeah. So what would, how would you break up with a sticker? Mine was swearing. Swearing. Wow. <laughs> we have three different. Yeah. Oh, can we- <laughs> Wow. So but you- with a cute animal, yeah. like a bunny or <laughs> or so. Yeah. Right, with, with like an asterisk with the, instead of the U. <laughs> yeah, and there's cute little hearts popping up around it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. She's so hardcore. Wow. I didn't, I didn't know it was like that when you break up. I mean, I'm friends with some of my exes, actually, in Korea and in America. Yeah, that's really surprising. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. Because Korea never talk to each other. I mean, like, if I call them... They'll pick up and we'll have a nice conversation, sometimes go out for dinner, something like that. I mean, obviously, it can't be a week after you break up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. But if it's like, if you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend that you're meeting right now, mm-hmm. currently, um, then won't you be kind of sorry? Well, no, I wouldn't be like contacting exes if I had a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, hey, you know, dinner was great, honey. And then, you know drop her off and then be calling up all the other exes it's awkward it's weird <laughs> what are you doing yeah i was with my ex. i was with my girl i feel like that's also a case-by-case basis though i notice in korea it's definitely not cool but mm-hmm. in in america it's almost seen as a sign of maturity to be able to have a very good relationship with an ex mm-hmm. while you're currently in a relationship as long as there's no feelings between the two mm-hmm. true true but what about the the current do you, do you get jealous? That's that's true. I think it also depends on the person. I don't know. I feel like I would be fine. Mm-hmm. With so you're not boyfriend. a jealous kind of girl? I'm not very jealous at all. My boyfriend wants me to be more jealous, so sometimes I'm like, oh man, who's that? But really, <laughs> I, just, I don't have it in me. Really? So your boyfriend, how did you meet him? We met at a coffee shop Oh, near the lake. In Korea. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's cool. It's like you were there by him, by yourself. And he was there by himself. Yeah. I was there actually just reading and he approached me and I thought he was going to speak in Korean to me, but he spoke in English. Mm-hmm. And originally I thought, okay, his English isn't that good. So I responded in Korean and then he kept speaking English and I realized his English was actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I spoke to him. <laughs> his English is pretty good. Yeah, nowadays his English is better than mine because I've forgotten English entirely. <laughs> but um, no, he asked me out for dinner and I was like, okay, maybe it's a language exchange, but uh, definitely was a date. <laughs> how did he word it? Like, break down his skills. <laughs> um, so, so first he's just... um. He was just like, hey, do you want to get dinner on Thursday night? It was very casual. But then he sent me a text that same night and he said, good night, princess. Oh. And I was oh. like, oh, he's hitting on me. Oh, man. It's not, it's <laughs> not so subtle now. No, not subtle at all. <laughs> good night, princess. Okay. Nobody calls me princess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, is he's Korean. He's Korean. But he's also... He's lived abroad. He's lived abroad. He lived in Canada. Okay, for how long? From the age of five until 19. Whoa. Yeah, most of his life. Yeah, so he's like a gyopo. He's like Canadian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell everyone he's a gyopo. Yeah, he's a gyopo. Mm -hmm. So his English is pretty much on point. I mean, all the important years, high school and middle school, elementary, it was all in English. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very good. Did you, is he the first Korean man you dated? Um... He's the first Korean guy I've been official with. Oh, interesting wordage there. I, I went, <laughs> that makes me sound really bad because, like, I met him only a month after I've been in Korea. But no, I went on like I went on a few dates mm-hmm. in Korea, and it was just kind of weird because we mostly talked in Korean, mm-hmm. and my Korean wasn't that good. <laughs> so it was just like me asking what they were saying. And then them, like, trying to speak in English to me. And it was just all awkward and wrong. Right. Yeah. Uh, language is huge, yeah. uh, I think, when it comes to relationships. Mm-hmm. So if if someone can't speak the other language at all, how does that work? I mean, because sometimes people get mail-order brides. Yeah. And they don't speak that language, but they get married and they stay together. I don't know. I've always wondered that, especially in Korea. I feel like there's... 
more and more Korean women getting married to American men. Mm -hmm. And I I always wonder, because the American guy doesn't speak a lick of Korean. Yeah, and doesn't want to (laughs) learn. Yeah. So I've always wondered how how that worked, because there's some very happy couples, but communication is huge in a relationship. The Korean girls don't speak English at all? Um... So, for example, one of my best friends back home in California, he's, his mom's Korean, mm-hmm. but his dad's American. Mm-hmm. And his mom came straight from Korea, and they met after, like, a year of her being in America, oh. and they got married. So, her English is okay, but it's not the best. Mm-hmm. But they're very happy. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know exactly how they talk to each other. Mm-hmm. But maybe not understanding each other's language might have a better relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no problems with the communication. Like, right? Even though, so. like, uh, like he, like my boyfriend, like talks about something that I don't know, then I won't know, right? Yeah. You just, <laughs> they could say something very offensive, and you'll just be like happy, okay. go lucky. Yeah. <laughs> I love have you. Have a good day at work. <laughs> okay. So in in America, though, you dated only American guys, pretty much. There there weren't a lot of Asians. Yeah, your, exactly. Right. So it depends on your area and who's around, right? So mm. when I was in America, there are a lot of Americans around, not that many Koreans. So I, I primarily dated American girls, mm-hmm. right? And then, of course, now that I'm in Korea, you know, a lot of people are Korean. But you're you're right. As far as the American guys marrying a Korean woman mm-hmm. and how does that work? But usually the Korean woman does speak some English. Yeah, it's usually the Korean woman because they grow up learning English and like hakwan and school. Right. Mm-hmm. But also lately, I've I've started to see a little bit more of the other thing where American girls started to date Korean guys right. a little more. Yeah, out on the streets. Right? It's definitely been increasing. Mm-hmm. Whenever I see them walking past me on the streets, I usually just stare them down because <laughs> there can only be one. But. No, there can only do. Is this Highlander? <laughs> um, yes. Is that, is that the reference? Is that where it's from? Um, maybe. Because because I totally got it. It okay. was Highlander. I love Highlander. <laughs> That's what, we're right there. I told Highlander is a TV show where, like, it was really cool concept. They're like all these like, uh, what, sword fighters, right? Were they sword fighters? Mm. Was it was it sword or like magic and swords? I just remember swords. Okay, yeah, (laughs) swords. And everyone has, there can only be one, and they're always trying to kill each other to get the Mm. power. I can't believe you you made that reference, but I did catch it. I did catch it. (laughs) I'm glad you caught it. I thought I was just going to say it, like, under the table, maybe do a quick glance at the camera. (laughs) (laughs) You'd be like, oh, they don't even know. (laughs) No, um, I was in America for a good chunk of time, so although I've been in Korea for a long time, I get a lot of the references, right? Mm -hmm. So I get that. And it's it's fun in Korea. And relationships are a little different, right? How can you compare it to, like, um, you know, your current relationship to, like, a Korean-Korean date? Is it a little different? Like... (sighs) Well, on the surface, it seems very different. Dating someone with Western ideals uh-huh. versus dating someone who lived in Korea their entire life. It's, I feel, I felt like at first I was dating another American, mm-hmm. but growing up in a Korean household has a big influence on the way that you <laughs> think and the way that you view relationships because your parents were Korean. Right. So after a while, initially we, we started fighting a lot because of those differences. For example, I feel like in Korea, it's not so much a big thing to communicate as it is to, like, kind of like nunchi, like uh, know exactly like what to do that would be right for the situation. And if you don't do what they expect you to do, then you're in the wrong. But in America, it's like, well, you should have told me. Right. Mm. Interesting. Um, What kind of situations are we talking about as far as, like, your boyfriend expected you to, like, do the right thing, appropriate thing, without him giving you a hint? So, there was this one time where we fought, where he said, I wish you would just, 
like I don't want to have to say this and I'm like just tell me what you want and he's like well sometimes I just want you to make me dinner when I come home (laughs) and I'm like oh well you just had to tell me that of course I'll do it but he's like but now it's not the same that I've told you (laughs) oh but then my boyfriend is the same he does the same thing like he expects you to know and if he tells you it's like Yeah, yeah it's like oh it doesn't mean it's anything like, I anymore. I want him to tell me. Just tell me. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, th- that's like a very common thing in Korean culture. I guess, but he's kind of, he's kind of westernized too because I don't mind telling a girl, like, hey, make some dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I prefer that approach. <laughs> right? But you're like, like, you're like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, chop, chop. <laughs> 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 All right, so you know there are two extremes, right? Mm-hmm. It's like that bossy male chauvinistic pig who's like, "Where's dinner? It's supposed to be on the table." Oh, and then I the other, it. and then the other guy is like, "Oh, I wish he would. She would just make me a nice meal." Yeah. And then he's like, kind of in between, but wants you to know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. But it's different because I told you to do it. <laughs> well, it is. I mean, girls, girls pull that commentary a lot yeah i was very surprised actually (laughs) right like getting flowers be like if i gave a girl flowers out of the blue she'd be like oh flowers oh i love them but then if she kept looking at flowers in the street like oh man you never gave me flowers like all right let me get those flowers over there (laughs) give it to her at the moment you know in that moment she'd be like "Mm, it's not the same (laughs) then you just want to throw them on the floor and stop by them (laughs) Me. <laughs> no, I'm just saying because, like, <laughs> you know, it's still, it's still, it's still a gift, right? Um, speaking of acts, right? You are uh, Korean improv, yes, right? <laughs> which is which is really cool. I, I got a chance to see you mm-hmm. uh, a few weeks ago on the stage, and I love the concept of like of like doing uh, an American sitcom style with like one word. <laughs> Something like that, right? Yeah, one suggestion from the audience. So, some guy from behind me said circle time. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Circle time was our sitcom. And (laughs) you guys were all pretty much on the same page as far as, like, where you guys are going to go with it. Like, high school. Like, it had, you know, it kind of had an American Pie kind of vibe, too. With like Stepler's mom. <laughs> oh yeah, like in the robe and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like everyone wants to be with Stepler's mom, right? <laughs> so like you guys were using that circle time thing, so it could have went a lot of different ways, but it was really fun. Oh well, thank you, yeah, thank like you that. for coming to our performance. So how long have you been doing uh, improv? I did improv for four years in high school, yeah. and I've been doing it in Korea since June. Cool, cool. Improv. I've never done it. Uh, I went to the practice. After I went to your show, I wanted to see you again. I wanted to see the whole experience, and I can imagine how hard it is oh. to just go up there and just think of stuff and not be shy when it comes to it. I actually think it's quite the opposite for improv, actually. Mm-hmm. If you're very shy, it's it's a good thing to go because it boosts your confidence. Mm-hmm. Because even though you say something that's not really that funny, mm-hmm. people will laugh at it and mm-hmm. you feel good about yourself. Right. So I know a lot of people who are really timid and just really scared mm-hmm. and they've become like a completely different person, like very outgoing mm-hmm. because they've got a lot of self-confidence from like, it. Like they get out of their skin for a moment. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just a very welcoming environment. Like if you, if you don't do a good job, like no one cares, they still congratulate you anyway. Right. Sometimes the fails are funny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the fails are so epic. It, it brings out a laugh. Yeah. It's usually better than the like intended comedy. Right. Right. So, um, how many shows have you done? I want to say about five ish, Mm -hmm. six, maybe. And I mean, actually the people you're performing with, the uh, actors are, they're also Americans or foreigners. So it's all in English, right? Yeah, exactly. But is it a little different compared to what you were doing back home in Cali? Actually, I was very surprised because everyone here was really good. 
so I was expecting because there's not a lot of English speakers in Seoul for it to be not very great, like very mm-hmm. bad acting. But I feel like it attracted a very unique group of people who've been doing this kind of stuff for a living in America, and they came here to work as teachers, and they ended up finding improv because. They just look so hard for that part of their life again. Mm -hmm. So it is different, but different in a better way. Mm, Okay. It was just surprising because you had uh, one kind of expectation and it exceeded those expectations. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's been a really fun podcast (laughs) and so glad to have you here. Thank you for having me. Right. So (laughs) the world can meet... Improv Bell, who's going to be the new star of Cam TV. Oh, oh. <laughs> what happens to me? <laughs> well, there are multiple stars on every <laughs> channel, right? Like Mad TV had several very famous actors, right? Yeah. So, what happened to me? <laughs> I was just joking. I know. Don't take yeah. it serious. The but, next like, podcast, I'll be wearing your clothes. <laughs> like, same haircut. Dude, that'd be, see, that would be hilarious. Skit. <laughs> yeah. If you were just like sitting here and then Susie's like, in the corner. But, like, yeah. <laughs> it's been replaced. <laughs> yeah. That would be hilarious. That's fun. <laughs> we, should, we should totally do that. Yeah.